CataractCoach.com, lensectomy and a 14-month-old baby, including posterior capsule opening and anterior vitrectomy. Now, look at this case here. You can see in this tiny little eye, you've got a completely opaque cataract. So certain here is making a little bit of a conch to me, a little tiny bit of cautery, and now making a little bit of a scleral groove here, and then here comes the incision to enter the eye, and this will be probably used to place the eye well. Here comes the paracentesis made of the left side, and now one more here on the right side. And now let's see some tripan blue dye, obviously very important, not only for staining the capsule, but for making it a little less elastic. And let's see what we're gonna do for the capsule opening here. Now, Ken initially described the two incision push-pull technique here. Our surgeon here is trying to do a bit of a rexus here. Again, it's very challenging because it's in a very elastic capsule. So as you tear a small opening, it enlarges into a bigger one. You can see how elastic that capsule is, especially compared to an adult or even a geriatric cataract patient. So getting this ground, getting it complete, and there we go, almost, there it is. Now you've got a good capsule opening. Here comes the infusion. So basically you're gonna do a bimanual removal. There's an AC maintainer. Here comes the, the right hand looks like, is that a vitrector even? And you can just aspirate. This is not a dense lens. There's no nuclear density at all. You can absolutely just use vacuum to aspirate and clean out all that lens material. Not sure why this baby has this cataract now. Why, why did the baby uh, develop this cataract later? Probably was not present at birth because the patient would then have very dense, bad amblyopia. This patient is 14 months old. It's a little more than a year old. And cleaning up the capsule bag here all looks pretty good. Now get all that cortex out. And again, in these babies, you're going to get very dense posterior capsule pacification. And in fact, these babies are very common to do a posterior capsular opening as well as an anterior vitrectomy just to help decrease that risk. Something about these young eyes, whether you get just proliferation of any residual lens epithelial cells. So again, cleaning up the bag very nicely here. Now, the question is, at 14 months, do you put an eye well in the eye? And I think it's reasonable to do so. We can certainly hear from our pediatric ophthalmology experts who do this all the time, and they can give input. And in this case, the surgeon's going to leave the patient a little hyperopic, not aiming for a plano outcome, but rather for a little hyperopic outcome to allow for axial elongation and growth for this patient. Now, switching hands here, there is that antivitrector. Remember, we got retinarounds.com. That's our sister channel. You want to learn how to do a beautiful vitrectomy in any case, that's how you learn. Retinarounds.com is great for retina specialists, but also amazing resource for ophthalmologists like me who specialize in cataract surgery. You got to check it out. Promise me that. Now, in cleaning up the capsule bag here, now if you're using this anterior vitrector to clean up the bag, remember you can use it on IA mode just to make sure you don't engage the cutter and you don't damage the capsule, which you'll need. Now, here we go, delivering the lens. Okay, lens going in, and I like the idea of this scleral type tunnel to deliver the lens inside the eye. I think that's a smart move because when you deliver the lens through that kind of tunnel, you're really going to have a nice ceiling of it, especially if you suture it up, which obviously I recommend doing here. Remember, in these baby eyes, the tissue is different than an adult eye and certainly different than a geriatric eye. In these patients, you really want to be very careful and make sure the incisions are absolutely sealed at the end of the case. And because the cornea is more elastic, again, I like the idea of that scleral type tunnel. I think it's going to give better long-term stability here. Now, you could put a little triumph cylinder on the eye to also engage to see if there is any more vitreous that needs to be evacuated from the eye. So here the surgeon is doing a very nice job of kind of cleaning up. Now, I think the posterior capsule is opened, right? Maybe I'm, am I just dreaming it, but I see the cutter moving. So obviously using the cutter. Ah, now you're opening the capsule. Got it. Very smart. So okay. Waiting until you have the eye well in the capsule bag. Now opening up the posterior capsule using the vitrector. Very nicely done. That's a nice maneuver. By doing it this way, obviously, you can help minimize any further prolapse. You can have a nice, very controlled result. So I do like the idea of the eye well going in first and then going underneath the eye well to remove the posterior capsule centrally and then also to do a little bit of anterior vitrectomy. Beautiful case. By the way, I'm watching the video for the first time with you. We're learning together. It's more fun if I just kind of click through the videos I get to see if they're good and then watch them in detail in real time with you as we get this commentary. And as you already know, this commentary is not edited. This is all just one take of me in giving you my input. Now here at the end, there is that vicral suture. It looks like a 10 vicral suture, getting that incision sutured up. Very nicely done. Close the conch too as well. I want that nicely closed. 
And then again, this page can have a nice outcome. Look at that. Even 10 micro on the paras. Yes, these baby eyes, it's too elastic. You, you want to have something in there for a temporary closure there. And this 10 micro is nice because it can dissolve on its own. You don't have to chase the baby down to remove them. And in the case, that's a beautiful result. Remember, the battle has just begun. You've got to make sure that it's not going to develop any amblyopia. Hey, check out retinarounds.com and, of course, our favorite, cataractcoach.com.